Good morning to you all on this, the second Sunday of Easter. And welcome to this virtual Eucharist, which comes to you from the parish of St. Giles and St. George in Ashstead. My name is Tim Long. I'm a retired assistant priest in that parish. I'll be conducting the service. Marion will be reading the gospel. Christine will be preaching to us, and Jane will be leading our intercessions. We begin our service. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful Lord, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. 
that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria will now be sung to us. Let us pray. Our collect is for the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Marion will now read the Gospel for the day to us. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now Christine will preach to us. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The resurrection changes everything. But what does the resurrection change? Let's look at what it changed for Thomas, one of Jesus' apostles. A sort of before and after review might help. Before the resurrection, we hear about him twice. Once when Jesus tells all the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, knowing he will be killed. And Thomas speaks up, let's all go with him and die with him. The second occasion is on the night before Jesus died, when Jesus was telling them all not to be afraid because he was going on ahead to prepare a place for them. And Thomas, honest Thomas, speaks up and says, but we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas the loyal, Thomas the courageous, Thomas the reflector, the thinker, the questioner. After the resurrection, we see him in the passage we read today. He has been absent from a spectacular visit of Jesus to his apostles on the same evening after his resurrection that morning. He's missed out, has Thomas, on a fantastic spiritual experience, and he's heard about it secondhand. He's found it hard to believe, not being able to take what his fellow disciples said at face value. There have been times when I've done all of those things. And there are times when it's right not to believe everything you're told. Evidence-based decisions are usually the best ones. And just because someone claims to be telling you a Christian truth doesn't mean it is. And I must evaluate everything in the light of what I know of Jesus. And here... Thomas didn't doubt Jesus, he doubted his peers. 
And let's just remember that all he asked for in terms of evidence was what the other disciples had already received to see Jesus and his wounds. Well, yes, he did actually ask, could he touch them as well? But now in this scene we read about, does Jesus rebuke Thomas? At first he speaks peace to them all, again as he had before. Then he shows Thomas his wounds as he had shown the others beforehand. He has come back and now repeats it all just for the one, the missing one. Listen, can you hear echoes of shepherds and lost sheep? I want to hear Jesus' words coming in a gentle voice to Thomas. Reach out, touch me, don't doubt anymore, just believe. But no touching is required for Thomas now. The presence of Jesus there with him is more than enough. And Thomas responds with those wonderful words of faith and affirmation, my Lord and my God. Yes, he's got it. He understands it's all fallen into place. Thomas, the theologian. The resurrection is God's endorsement of Jesus as his son and as our saviour. It's a unique event in human history, following the unique life of God present in human history. Now I can know that life in God continues beyond the grave and that the power of death has been overcome. That changes everything. It changes the way I live now and it changes the way I will die when that happens. Coronavirus is not the enemy. Death is the enemy and has been overcome by Jesus' resurrection by God, his Father. Thomas's own story changes things too. It changes many misconceptions about faith. Questioning is not wrong. Waiting to engage our minds in faith is not wrong. And Thomas learned how to tell others because he knew what it had been like to struggle with doubt. There is that wonderful part of the text where Jesus says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is a strange statement here. It's in the past tense. But the resurrection has only just happened that morning. So this looks like a phrase that has been added in later by the narrator. There will be generations of people who won't have seen as Thomas did, but who will be blessed, and that includes us. We are as blessed as he and all those apostles. Thomas was changed by his encounter with the broken and wounded parts of Christ's body. And we are now the body of Christ on earth. How can we be credible to others in our Easter witness? Maybe by acknowledging our wounds and brokenness too. Triumphal Christian theology can sometimes overwhelm people, distance them from faith. Wounded Christians who nevertheless stay faithful can sometimes be a much greater witness for Jesus. As we close, would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, take our wounds and let them be signs of grace for use by thee. 
Take our doubts and fears and pain. Use them for thy kingdom's gain. Amen. We respond to God's word by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father, almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jane will now lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead and alive for evermore, stand in our midst today and speak your peace to our hearts and minds. At this time of national anxiety, let us pray for Christian love and to love our neighbours as ourselves and to love God with all our hearts and minds. Let us pray for Christian courage, courage to face hardship and fear and to do what is right. And let us pray for Christian hope, the hope that does not despair. Sustain, O Lord, with your love, your church here on earth, and bless all members everywhere. We pray for all ministers, bishops, priests and deacons, and particularly all those working in our parish here in Ashdod, caring for people and reflecting in their work your infinite care for us. We are surrounded by so much need, Please bless this church's efforts to help and support those in our community. Almighty God, we pray for those in authority, that they may lead us with wisdom and understanding for the good of all people. And particularly at this time, we pray for and give thanks for all those who work in the NHS and for all those who are working so hard to support life in our community. We bring before you, Lord, in faith and love and hope, all those who are unwell, and particularly those known to us personally. We pray you will protect the healthy, calm the frightened, and give courage and comfort to those who are sick. May your people use their energy and skills to unite with one another in conquering disease and fear. We give you thanks, O Lord, for spring's return and for the rejuvenation of our natural world and the beauty around us. Let us be assured by this gentle insistence that goodness will return and that warmth and life shall succeed. Let us see that as a bird now builds its nests bravely with tiny bits and pieces, so must we build our faith. Lord God, you have so faithfully cared for us in times past, so often seen us through to safety. Grant that in these times of anxiety, we may look back and refreshed by the remembrance of your past mercies, may turn again to the future in renewed trust and in unfailing hope. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, and now for some Ashton Parish news. Firstly, Let's share some of the wonderful decorations that people have put up over the Easter period. I think as I'm speaking, some of those will be coming up on your screen just now. 
A particular thank you to those that made beautiful bunting and lovely Easter messages for your front uh, windows and your gardens. I'm sure it was an encouragement to many people at this difficult time. And I thought it sat very well next to the colourful rainbows and colourful Easter eggs that people have put up to thank the NHS and care workers for all that they're doing. I'd like to remind you that the Sunday services will continue to stream on a Sunday morning and will be available on YouTube for you to catch up with afterwards as well. Also on YouTube, each day, there are special reflections going up by the leadership team and by members of the congregation. Uh, on Monday, there'll be one on spiritual growth. On Tuesday, everyday faith. On Wednesday, there'll be a weekly thought. On Thursday, a written thought. And on Friday, at this time several months ago, someone's personal story or testimony. And lately, so I think one of the best things about my job at Tear Fund has been the privilege to travel to probably over 20 different countries and to travel to places that you'd never get to go to normally. So most recently in February, I was in Nepal. So I was to read the Bible called Lectio Divina. This way of reading and reflecting on scripture has been around for hundreds of years. A new family tradition of stopping at noon for the Lord's Prayer and we say that together and my wife found a beautiful video of Andrea Bocelli singing the Lord's Prayer. Stunningly beautiful. So we... I'd also like to encourage you to look at the church website where the current newsletter is and also lots of other information to keep you connected, both uh, parish news and also home group information. Do go and have a look. We've got some really exciting news for you. In 30 weeks time, on the 11th of May, we're starting a new Alpha course. That's a course to explore faith. If you'd like to join us or know someone who would be interested, please write us an email uh, to the email you'll see down there. And please try and think of who you'd like to invite. It's, it's going to be online, so it's going to be via Zoom from 8 to 9 p.m. every Monday for eight weeks. And we're really looking forward to having some deep conversations with you or your friends. It's going to be really interesting. So, so please um, let other people know. And if you're interested, sign up or just send us an email if you want more information. Thank you. We will now share together the piece. If you have people with you, then this is the time to share the piece. Otherwise, we will have to share it virtually with one another, wishing that we could be together in one place as we usually would be. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and eat his, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our creation. And share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. I invite you now, if you have bread and wine or something approximating to them uh, with you, that you share these together with me. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. A prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.